podcast Public Health Uncoded with Dr. Saroj Pachauri brought to you by Centre for Human Progress in partnership with the POP movement where POP stands for Protect Our Planet. Dr. Saroj Pachauri, a public health expert, provides commentary on some of the major public health issues of the current times and the various determinants of public health at play with high risk and vulnerable groups. Every month, Dr. Saroj Pachauri, a doctor of medicine and a distinguished public health scholar with over 60 years of experience, will unpack key public health concerns and opportunities in the current global arena with evidence and insights. Welcome everyone to another episode of our podcast. I'm your host, Drisha Patel, and I'm thrilled to announce that starting this month, we will be bringing you not one but two insightful podcasts every month. In today's episode, we are diving into the multifaceted topic of climate change, a subject that is both deceptively simple to describe, yet profoundly complex to fully grasp. It is simple in the sense that we can put it into words, but its intricate mechanisms and far-reaching impact can be quite challenging to comprehend. That's why we have made it our mission to dedicate each month to unpacking the intricate relationship between climate change, pollution and public health. To start off, we couldn't think of a better way than having our very own honorary mentor and researcher Dr. Norma Patricia Munoz. She holds a doctorate in oceanography, biology and has a remarkable career as an educator, having trained numerous masters and doctorate level students with over 59 research projects and over 310 presentations to her name. She is a prominent figure in the field of marine resource management and environmental impact. Dr. Munoz is a recognized member of various environmental organizations and currently serves as the President of the Climate Change Council of the Presidency of the Republic. Her extensive contributions have earned her numerous awards including the Great Women of the 21st Century Distinction and the Order of Academic Palms in the Degree of Night from the French Republic. She will today discuss an emerging issue that many may not yet be familiar with, sargasm. A brown seaweed. This topic is relatively new and remains largely unknown to the general public and even within the climate field. The pop movement has been diligently researching its impact as we have both the experts who have been leading this research, Dr. Pachori herself and Dr. Norma, to address the essential questions surrounding this climate and health risk issue Let's invite them to shed light on a topic that deserves our attention. Welcome, Norma. I'm delighted that you have agreed to join the podcast. Uh, I'm in fact honored that an expert such as yourself is going to talk about the subject of sargasm, a subject that is now on a lot of people's minds and a subject that wasn't there a few years ago. You know, sargasm was a word that we didn't even hear or know about. And today, everybody is very concerned about the problem of sargasm because sargasm, a seaweed, as we know, a slimy brownish seaweed, is covering large, la- coming in large quantities in tons and tons and covering all the beaches, the beautiful beaches of the Caribbean where you are, are being destroyed. So there is a lot of concern about sargasm and we will talk about, I'd like to talk about several aspects of the problem which I hope you will shed light on. Why is it happening like this? Sarcasm was always there, but since the last few years, especially since 2012, it has increased in amount and is creating a problem, therefore. Why is that happening? They say it is due to climate change. Is it due to climate change? Is it because of the temperature of the waters? What is causing this problem? Then the other issue is that it has all kinds of adverse effects that we have seen. 
since it's lying on the beaches and destroying the beauty of the beaches, it's affecting tourism, it's affecting fisheries, it's affecting the economic livelihoods of the people who are in these businesses, it's affecting health, it's having all kinds of adverse effects, and I'd, we'd like to talk about what these are. And then, last but not least, I also want to get your opinion on what we can do to benefit from this problem. Is there something we can do that, that, that is beneficial? And if so, can we change this tragedy of sargasm to an optimistic approach so that we can benefit from this, from this problem and use it in useful ways that hel helps humanity? So these are some of the big questions, but let me start with what you think is the problem, what are the risks to the population in the Caribbean because of the pro problem of sargasm. Can you tell me that, Norma? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sarosh Pachori, for this kind invitation and for your introduction. And uh, yes, in fact, uh, sargasm is a huge problem in the Caribbean region, not only in the Caribbean, Mexican Caribbean. And I would like to say that, yes, the population has a very high risk and it, depend, it depends on the way that they are facing the, the seaweed directly or indirectly and can be in three ways. Uh, first of all, if the seaweed is in the water, the risk for people who want to swim in those waters is like uh, you get in touch with, with this uh, macroalgae and with the sargasso. You can get some kind of irritation on your skin and also the smell of the waters become very bad because the sargassum near the coast, near the beaches, is in the composition. The second place where it's risky for the population itself is when the sargassum reach the beaches and people is removing this sargassum that, like you said, in huge amounts every day, constantly, the whole day they are working there. And the workers that they are removing with the sargassum, when they keep it for a long time, means one, two, three days, that is not possible to remove everything, the sargassum in the composition start to send gases, gases that they are very harmful for people. And when they breathe, they can have health problems that certainly you're going to talk after all that, about this. And the third place and the third way to get people population in risk is when this sargassum, this seaweed, or macroalgae, two ways to call it, is going to the land. They put it in the land, and there, in an open sky, what we call an open sky space, the sargassum has two ways to put in risk population. First of all, when start the decomposition, also there, the gases are coming to the atmosphere, and with the winds, people in many localities can get this air polluted with methane, with ammonia, or with uh, hydrogen sulfide, and then their health is in risk. The other way to pollute or to put in risk the population is with the lixiviation or leaching of this sargassum into the groundwater. What happened there? That all these leaching products that they are going into the waters, when this population gets water at home, or they go into the uh, spaces that we call cenotes, that is the open, like an open eye of water uh, in the, the ground waters, um, they can also get this problem in health. Those are the risks that the population, and also particularly that is a very touristic area, as you know, and the tourists, they, they are not happy with that. If they decided to don't go into the, the sea to, to swim, they can stay on the beach, but the beach is getting also this smell and they don't like it. Mm -hmm. The smell of rotten eggs is very, very bad for them. Mm -hmm. Then people is complaining, tourists, even if they go two, three days, it's like, a, you sold me a package, you know, holiday package that was beautiful and they arrived here mm -hmm. and I get a risk in my health or it's completely ugly what I am seeing on the beach. Those are the risks that the population is taking in our days in the Mexican Caribbean. Yes, you mentioned the health risks several times. And uh, as you know, perhaps we are doing this work, uh, research uh, on looking at what are the health risks of sargasm because we're very concerned about it. And we find that there are a number of problems. 
it can affect the skin, it can affect the respiratory tract, it can affect the neurological system, and so on. And then we find that this sargasm carries with it heavy metals. Heavy metals like arsenic, like, like zinc, like cadmium, and so on and so forth. And these metals also are a problem. And we don't know enough. We need to understand what, what is the problem with the metals, how much dose causes a problem, what problem does it cause, and what are the health risks of the various metals. So research is underway, and we also doing, we, we've interviewed a number of different stakeholders who are concerned and living around the area. For example, the hotel hoteliers, for example, the people who removed the seaweed, as you just described, people who are there at beach goers, and others, many others, to get an idea from them as to what they perceive as the health issues. And, and it, it's surprising that even in a small research that we've done now, and we need to do much more, there are skin rashes, there are skin redness, there's blurring of the vision, there's eye problems of all kinds, irritation, redness, and so on. Then there are neurological problems. It affects the nervous system so that there is memory loss in some cases, there are headaches, there are mood swings, and there are gastrointestinal problems as well. So there are a number of symptoms that we've recorded which, are, which we attribute to sargasm. And we need to understand, however, how we can prevent this. And in order to understand how to prevent it, we need to understand much more what are the interrelationships between sargasm and its health effects and how are they caused and what is the dose and so on and so forth. So there's a lot, lot that needs to be done. But getting back to the problem, let me ask you again, what is causing this massive movement of sargasm? They say it is climate change. Can you tell me more about it? Because this is an issue we are concerned about. Yeah, yes, of course, I can, I can say something about what caused this uh, situation. Mm -hmm. Well, sargassum arrives to our coast since maybe uh, 2028, 20, and that, at that moment was not that much, it was few sargassum, people was aware that it's coming, it's arriving, it's not too much, and then it's gone, and that was. In two, two, 2011, the problem was a little harder, and the people said, okay, it's coming back again, and what are we going to do? And they decided to do, like always, okay, we'll go, we'll go, and let it go. And it, it, it was like that. In 2015, we had a, a huge and massive arrival of sargassum, um, being there in a meeting, and suddenly people started to move because it was really that much after four years, and then decided to give some money and to start to work and work and work in that, the, that um, year. They do a little work, 2015, we didn't get in 2016, not even 2017. And then people said again, we'll not come again, or if it's coming, but in 2018, the problem was a huge problem, a huge situation that we are, we are facing until our, nowadays. Why? Because exactly what you said, climate change is working now very strongly uh, changing the situation of the ocean, the composition of the ocean, the temperature of the ocean. Normally, it, that is one of the theories that the, this sargassum that is a floating species is coming from the sargassum sea that you can locate in the north of Atlantic. What happened with this kind of sargassum? That this kind of sargassum is living in an oligotrophic system, means that the sargassum sea has very, is poor in nutrients then the population is still, you know, stable. But when this part of this sargassum is going through the south, to the Atlantic, uh, reach many places where you have big rivers, a huge rivers like the Congo River, Amazon River, and Orinoco River, and first arrives to Africa with uh, the Congo, then goes at the beginning, because now I will tell you something that is very very curious and it is very problematic. From Africa was going to South Africa, South America and then to the Caribbean region. The problem is that when you have a river that is uh, highly polluted along the river, when they arrive to the coast, all this pollution is going into the, to the sea. And then we are talking about a region that is with a lot of, is eutrophicated, is 
a lot of eutrophication means that you have a lot of nutrients in the water. Then sargassum arrives there. It's a very rich uh, environment and they start to grow very quickly. That is a big problem. And the problem now is the sargassum is not going back directly to the sargassum sea. It's, it's just a very small part. The rest is going now through America, Africa to America and going back and forward, back and forward. And they have now in this area in the Atlantic uh, something like we call the sargassum belt. It's not going anymore to the top. It's growing and growing and growing. And you know that this spot of sargassum has more than 5,000 miles wide. And that is very much sargassum. Currents, difference in currents because of the pollution. The winds, they are changing. The surface temperature is changing. Waters are more, more and more uh, hot waters. And also, you have a very strong acidification because the ocean is taking the CO2 that is at the atmosphere. At least 30, 35% is taking, is sinking in the, in the ocean. Then all of these change the circulation, the currents, and that's why sargassum is growing, is moving, and is causing a lot of troubles. Yes, climate change has a lot of things to do, and global warming, of course. Together. What is happening to the marine ecosystem? I understand the corals are being affected and many other things are being affected. Yeah, mainly coral reefs because, as you know, a coral is, a, uh, is an individual uh, that is a collaboration between one animal and one algae. Mm -hmm. This algae, when sargassum, of course, leaves because it's photosynthesis, what they are doing, you know, is collaboration between the, the two. Mm -hmm. uh, species in that the corals are beautiful, are alive, etc. When sargassum cover a part of this coral reef, the coral is, is dying because they don't get the light that they need to make mm -hmm. photosynthesis. Yeah. And then algae dies and the animal dies and the coral get white. What we call is bleaching. The coral is bleaching. Then the problem, as um, as you know, is that we are losing the coral. The Mesoamerican uh, coral reef in this region has a damage about 30%, 40% already because of the sargassum and because also with the warming of the waters. This heat that we had, the hot weather that we had, very high temperature that we had a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. they provoke already damage a mm -hmm. little more than sargassum altogether in this area. And also an, another ecosystem that is very important is the seagrass. It's exactly the same, the same effect. The seagrass that is very close to the beach is a beautiful ecosystem, rich also in all kind of organisms, and it's exactly the same effect. You see all the carpets of sargassum that you can see near the beaches, sometimes 40 meters, uh, wide and then it's ex the same effect no light the, the seagrass is not growing it's dying and you can get now a mix of sargassum and seagrass dead on the beaches that is the damage of the ecosystems that's very sad to hear but you have also been working on looking at the effect of sargassum on the air quality yes can you tell us what's happening to air quality? Because that is a big concern. Yeah. Well, the air quality is changing very rapidly with the emission of these gases that we were talking about, uh, the hydrogen sulfide and the ammonia that we measured last year in, uh, in the whole uh, coastal line of uh, Quintana Roo State and also Cozumel Island, because we wanted to know exactly the concentration of those gases that uh, are produced by the composition of sargassum. And what we got, we put some uh, provisional um, filters to measure this concentration during seven days, and then we read it in the lab. The concentrations gave us, gave us as a result, where we need to set up fixed stations, not provisional stations. Now it was only to know exactly what was going on on the whole, uh, coastal line, but now we know that from 12 places 
where we put some provisional filters, only six of them is worthy to put a fixed station. What, uh, why is important? Because you have a lot of changes in the direction and intensity of the wind in the whole region. And it's possible that those gases that they are produced near the beach or in the land or in land can go around the whole state and other states, other states that are close to Quintana Roo and damage health of the people, of the population. Mm -hmm. That is a big problem. And the air quality, now we have a network in the whole Caribbean region with uh, this kind of work because we need to set up a system, alert, uh, alert system for the population. This area is not good to go. This beach is not good to be there for all people, for kids, for tourists. You know, we can give this kind of information and that way avoid the effect of the gases on health. Thank you. That's very helpful, Norma. Can you say just a few words about the economic impacts of sarcasm, you know, the effect on the um, on the beach goers, on the visitors who are now not coming to the beaches because the beaches have been destroyed by sargasm. Fisheries, that's another problem. Can you say a few words about those issues? Sure. Well, uh, first of all, the fisheries, you know, now the the fishes, the schools, we call it like this when you have mm -hmm. a, a big a number of, uh, amount of, number of uh, uh, elements or individuals. Then when the water is warm, they move to another places looking for cold waters, mm -hmm. at least colder mm -hmm. than they have. Mm -hmm. Then they are disappearing. Mm -hmm. That's why we got some issues with the birds, seabirds, and also that people is complaining, we don't have any more fishes. Mm -hmm. We cannot fish anymore because something is going wrong. Mm -hmm. That is the fisheries. On the other hand, uh, yes, this is a region, the whole Caribbean region, it's a Caribbean, it's a region where it lives from the tourism as a main activity. You don't have, uh, in addition to the pandemic, that they had two years, almost two years, mm -hmm. closest in all the facilities, restaurants, hotels, and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. Of course, that is a lot of economic losses, a yeah. lot. So yeah. the tourism industry is seriously yeah. affected. Yes. Yeah, and that's a big industry in that area. Yeah. So it's economically impacting those countries. So it's a huge problem. Now we've talked a lot about the problems that and the adverse effects of sarcasm. I understand that there is a possibility, there are some possibilities that one has seen where we can turn this around from a problem to an asset. What can be done to use sargasm. Is there anything we can do for using sargasm? I heard that they're making bricks out of sargasm and so on. Can you tell us more about how we can possibly, because if we can use this this problem, turn it into an asset, then it will be very, very good. But at the moment, we are only getting problems and more problems. Yes. Well, uh, just to talk about what we can do with the sargasm, mm -hmm. what value we can give mm -hmm. and value to the, yep. to the sargasm, to the species, I can tell you first, those species, those two species that we have arriving to the Caribbean region, mm -hmm. that is Sargassum fritans and Sargassum natans, mm -hmm. pelagic species, pelagic means that they are floating, they are, they are not fixed in the, in the sediments. Um, they, we have a problem, a big problem. The big problem is because of the way that they are coming and they are arriving to the the Caribbean region, mm -hmm. and what they get on their way coming here, they are getting a lot of heavy metals. The, the content of heavy metals is very high. Mm -hmm. The concentration of arsenic is the critical point that tells us what uses we can give to sargassum. Mm -hmm. The maximum mm -hmm. permissible limit of arsenic is 40 ppm part per million. Since higher concentrations represent mm -hmm. a serious risk to human health and ecosystems. Actually, bricks, shoes, mm -hmm. notebooks, sandals, etc., are being produced, which is totally dangerous. Various institutions have found concentrations of arsenic in the sargassum that reaches our coast and the Caribbean region in general, ranging from 30 ppm to values above. 200 ppm. 
Therefore, given it a diverse added mm -hmm. value, would not be responsible vis-a-vis -vis for the health and affectation of the ecosystems. In my opinion, for the moment, mm -hmm. the only solution is to generate biogas with sargassum and from there electricity, which could cover the needs of an island like uh, Isla Mujeres in Quintana Roo. You can tell me, you can remove the arsenic. Yes, you, we can, but the process, the chemical process, to remove arsenic from this macroalgae is very expensive. Mm -hmm. Then you can produce shoes, what, what will be the price? They are not taking out, I am sure that they are not taking out. They are processing the, the algae, the seaweed, and they are produce what they think that they are, is, is okay. In my opinion, as the arsenic is still there, and we need also to make another test. We need to monitoring this species a long year, every month, making a determination of the arsenic and other metals, heavy metals, and the year after also to prove that we, what we got the first year is correct and is exactly the same or is seasonal. You know, this season is higher, this season is less, uh, because otherwise it's not responsible, like I said, to do something else. I think that is not good. For me, like I insist, is to produce biogas you can send to the hotels for the kitchens for the uh, ac or for other uses or to the houses also for gas at the kitchen but that is one part you can produce electricity and to give electricity to an island a small island like isla mujeres that is in my opinion what we need to do but the big problem and i close with this is that in mexico we don't have a regulations about what we can do with this resource, natural resource. When is a natural resource? When is in the water? When is a, res a residue and a danger that residue is when it's out of the the the, the, the marine um, environment on the sand? Mm -hmm. When we don't have regulation, and that makes almost impossible to do something else. So there are serious challenges, is what you're saying, and I agree with you. But I do still think that you know we do we would need to do a lot of research to find out what we can do which is beneficial f coming from the sargasm. One has heard about the possibilities of some pharmaceutical drugs. There are some anti-inflammatory, anti-infective properties, maybe, uh, but very little is known, and we need to know more because. It is a huge problem. We are facing the problem. And if we can turn, turn the problem into an asset somehow and give that a high priority, put in the resources that are needed to do that, it would be beneficial. As of now, it is not beneficial. It is detrimental. So with that, I think I'd like to close by again thanking you for providing your inputs, which are very valuable. And as you know, we are writing a book on health, climate change and health. And, and I'm, I'm very grateful that you have contributed a chapter on sargasm and air quality. We look forward to reading that book in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Saras Pachori. Yes, just to tell something uh, before we close, to tell you that sargasm is, uh, we have more than 300 species of sargasm, and you are right. Some of uh, these species are used for pharmaceutical uh, purposes, but in the case of those two, like I said, I want to remark is mm -hmm. for the moment not possible sargassum fritans and natans. We need to do much more research, of course. Thank you so very much. It was a pleasure to have you too. And uh, yeah, you are a collaborator in the in this health public issue uh, caused by sargassum. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Have a good day. Today's conversation touched on various aspects of the sargassum problem. These included concerns arising from the surge in sargassum, the factors driving its increase, the health risk it poses, its economic repercussions on local communities, and its effect on air quality. Additionally, we underscored the pressing need for further research to gain a comprehensive understanding of sargassum, essential for implementing regulatory measures 
and uncovering its potential applications. As we wrap up today's conversation, I hope you now understand why I described climate change as both simple and complicated at the beginning. We dwell into just one emerging issue caused by climate change, and you can see how multifaceted it is. Sargasm is not limited to one country or one ocean. It is spreading from the Caribbean Sea to the Atlantic Ocean, affecting over 20 plus countries. Even the world's most beautiful beaches are losing their charm. Marine life is suffering and coastal communities are unaware of the impeding impact. During my time in the field as part of the research team, we discovered that less than 1% of the population was aware of the heavy metals and toxins associated with sargasm arrival. More facts about sargasm and climate change are covered in our forthcoming book titled Climate and Health Nexus – Unraveling the Connections. This book includes contributions from various researchers studying the link between climate and health. Thank you for joining us today and together Let's make a difference in the face of these complex challenges. We also want to give you a chance to make a difference by joining the pop movement. And it's very easy. Just leave a comment and we will reach out to you. Also, if you would like to show your support to this research, then please visit us at www.thepopmovement.org and make a contribution. Stay connected for another episode of this month of public health uncoded.